All right, welcome everybody. We are going to go ahead and cover glycolysis and I'm gonna try to draw this out so that way we can see it all together. So here we go. What we're gonna do is go through the steps of glycolysis. So again, glycolysis is just simply taking one glucose molecule and we're going to make two pyruvates. And then ultimately that pyruvate is going to go to acetyl-CoA and then the electron transport chain. So the first step, again, if we're looking at the cell, we already reviewed the process of the GLUT4 receptor on the cell. We have insulin that's attached to the receptor to allow GLUT4 to then take glucose inside of the cell. So this is occurring in the cytosol and we're gonna have glucose as our first option here once we get inside the cell. Now glucose is going to then be converted to glucose 6-phosphate. And in order to do this, glucose 6-phosphate must get a phosphate. So what we have to do is we have to actually put some ATP into this system. So we're gonna use energy to basically create energy. So ATP gets reduced to ADP. Sorry, that's kind of hard to see. And the enzyme that's responsible for this process here is hexokinase. So hexokinase. And then we also have glucokinase. And again, glucokinase is the one that's located in our liver. Hexokinase is in our muscles. All right, so at this point, the cell has to decide, is it going to continue on with glycolysis or are we gonna make glycogen? So if the cell does not need additional ATP, this glucose 6-phosphate is then gonna go make glycogen. But because we've identified that this cell does in fact need energy, we're gonna take glucose 6 phosphate and it's going to become fructose 6 phosphate. And from fructose 6 phosphate, we're then going to add another phosphate group and it's going to become fructose 1 6 bis phosphate. And as well as in order to get that phosphate group, we're going to have to use another molecule of ATP to transform and transfer the phosphate group, so ADP. Okay, so we had to use up two molecules of energy here. I don't have a stylus, so this is really scratchy, I'm sorry. Now, once we go from fructose 1,6-bis-phosphate, this is what we would call the rate limiting step. So at this point, we can't really turn back and we are committed to glycolysis. So just going to the next slide here, I'm gonna draw a fructose 1,6-bis-phosphate again. So here we're gonna get our black again. So we're gonna have fructose one six bis phosphate. And here is what we would call the rate limiting step where it's gonna actually go into two different molecules. So we are going to produce a dihydroxy acetone, and then we're also going to produce a glycerol aldehyde 3-phosphate, or G3P. I'm going to use that for short moving forward. So the enzyme here that's responsible for this is our rate-limiting enzyme, meaning that we are committed to this pathway now. So that's phosphofructokinase. 
And this is going to be regulated by the energy level within the body. So it's going to be inhibited or turned off if there is a high amount of ATP. And then it's going to be turned on when there's low ATP as well as insulin present. So from here, um, di dihydroxyacetone is actually going to go to G3P. And that's because it favors the G3P pathway. So from here forward, we're going to take everything times two, which is why one molecule of glucose ends up with two molecules of pyruvate. So from G3P, we're then going to go and we are going to do make one three bis phosphate glycerate. And this particular enzyme here is another important one. While it's not a rate limiting step, it is going to provide us our first energy carrier. So this is glycerol aldehyde. Wow, my handwriting is terrible on this thing. I apologize. Glycerol aldehyde. three dehydrogenase. Now, as I said, this is gonna give us our first energy carrier. So we're gonna make NADH here. Again, there's two of those. So NADH. All right, now we are then going to move pretty quickly to the next group here, where we then go and make uh, three phosphoglycerate. So three phosphoglycerate. And then I'm gonna slide to the next one here. So we have picking up, we have three phospho. glycerate, and we're going to just move the phosphate group to a two, so it becomes two phosphoglycerate. And finally, we then get PEP or phosphoenol pyruvate. And our last step is going to be producing a pyruvate. So here we have pyruvate is our final step. Again, there's two pyruvates that we get at the very end. And this is also gonna give us a little bit of ATP. So we're gonna make ATP in this last step here. And that's how we get our two molecules of pyruvate. Now from pyruvate, we're going to go and aerobic pathway. So let's look at the aerobic pathway. So pyruvate here can either go to acetyl-CoA, and this would be under aerobic containing conditions. So oxygen is present. And pyruvate here can also go and make lactic acid or lactate when there's no oxygen present, so anaerobically. And then lactate can actually convert back to pyruvate. And in this step here, we're going to also produce another energy carrier. And we're going to be able to get about three ATPs from the NADH when we're going to the aerobic pathway. 
Now from here, acetyl-CoA is going to go inside the mitochondria matrix and go through the Krebs cycle. We'll cover that in a different video.